Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and we're going to talk about a product that has been featured in my second and my eighth most popular video. The Deep Cool Gamax 400. Now, the, I decided to do this video months ago and I reached out to Deep Cool and they were more than happy to supply me the sample when I'd already bought one because I'm impatient. And then this project went on the back burner because there's a lot of other eh, just things that need to be taken care of project wise. So the title of this video is very important and that is you know talking about the myth that this stock cooler is good now let me preface this with the first and second gen Ryzen this is true also they got away from the copper slot which has a factor and it has a fan that spins faster this actually is one that comes on the 3400G which did perfectly fine in my testing but with Ryzen 3000 having such aggressive precision boost overdrive, what we're going to talk about today is not only why so many of my viewers have bought this CPU fan over the years, but also the myth that this heatsink is good enough for Ryzen 3000. I'm running the standard test bench I always do, which is Ryzen 5 3600, the stock cooler and a deep cool um, Gamax 400. 3600 megahertz, 16 gigabyte kit, CL19, uh, 500 gig NVMe SSD by Crucial, EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. Uh, we have the Pure Power 11600 watt, 80 plus gold, Silent Base 801, and the ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard. Now, <laughs> let's talk about some assumptions. And the one game test that I did, because honestly, it's the only one that really showed anything, motion blur was off. Uh, precision boost overdrive is enabled and that's really important for this test. I'm running two monitors 1440p 1080p respectively. Uh, GPU boost precision was used. Memories overclocked the DOCP or XMP in this case. Uh, I do have a normalized fan curve that goes like um, 46 to 800. I do that on all my testing. Uh, and then synthetics have very few uh, programs open. So we're not going to have a lot of um, benchmarks to show here because I kind of lumped them together. So Looking at all the scores of the synthetic, so Final Fantasy 14, Shadowbringers, almost no difference. Superposition, almost no difference. 3D Time Spy, actually a little bit of a difference. And Cinebench, uh, R20, also a little bit of difference as well. Uh, the last two were repeatable uh, differences, so very little. Um, so really not enough necessarily to justify a 20-hour CP cooler at this point, but those were repeatable differences, and it has to do with how the CPU boosts. Now this one, Blender, is gonna be a little different, and indeed it is. We actually gained uh, a little bit of time here, so 5.07 seconds, that's around like 5.04, and I think it was like four minutes and 54 seconds. So there was definitely some legitimate separation, and that has to do with how the CPU is gonna boost under the thermal conditions. This was kind of interesting. Forza Horizon 4, we had about a two to three FPS difference on every run. Uh, so we kind of just capped it at three. So 114 to 117 respectively. So I was uh, pretty surprised about that. But when you look at this last chart, this is kind of the point of this is there was for Forza Horizon 4, um, a 10, F, uh, 10 degree difference. So that means it's going to uh, boost a little bit differently. Now these temps are over ambient. So when we look at superposition, there was no difference, but as soon as we hit a game, 10 degrees difference. So that's Interesting to note because and this is why I want to do a game or two in some synthetics. When you put a load on an open air GPU in an enclosure, that's going to affect the cooling of a CPU, especially one with this kind of cooler versus something that's already getting fresh air from the front. Uh, when we move along to Final Fantasy XIV, um, a pretty big difference there as well. We were about 13 degrees difference. Moving on to 3D Mark Time Spy, we were 12 degrees there. We were 13 degrees in Cinebench, and we were 13 degrees in Blender, respectively. When you add back in ambient temperature, you're pretty close to 90 degrees, which is not dangerous for this chip. For 24-7 operation, I would say it might not be great for it, but it's not dangerous, at least for these kind of workloads. So why am I doing my third or fourth video about a CPU cooler? Do I just want more views? Of course I do, but that's not the reason. 
The reason is, is when Ryzen 1st Gen and Ryzen 2nd Gen came out, the philosophy was the CPU cooler included was much better than Intel and can hold some a little bit of overclocking. And that was, for the most part, true when it, this had a copper slug and the fan was 500 RPM slower because it didn't need to be faster. But then Ryzen 3000 launched and they're like, oh crap, AMD is really on this enthusiast market here. And what I'm here to tell you about is if you have a Ryzen 3000 chip, this is not good enough. If you're buying a 3600, you need to budget $20 or more. This is not good enough. Because if you're gonna then just enable Precision Boost Overdrive, why are you spending this money on a chip? Get a 2600X. It's gonna perform a little worse, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna be better overall. The problem is, is this chip over here, which is actually sealed up right now because I'm doing testing on another chip, will boost to 4.2 gigahertz all core at around 90 to 100 watts, depending on the workload. This CPU is rated to 65, or the CPU core. It's not, it's, that's the reason why we had some performance differences, actual performance differences, with this cooler because it's bringing the clock speeds back because we're starting at higher temperatures. And that's how Ryzen 3000 works, just like GPU. The lower the temperatures, the better will sustain its boost speeds on it, in this case, all core. This is gonna keep close to the four gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz all core. I mean, you probably want something a little bit beefier in this if you wanna maintain it everywhere. But, you know, I think there's a reason why so many people have bought this CPU cooler you know, using my code or other people's code is because this can get the job done on a lot of CPUs out there for 20 bucks. And if you're going with Ryzen 3000, the idea that the stock cooler is good enough and good enough for a little bit of overclocking is not right. For Ryzen 1000, 2000, yes it is, because it was more so limited on just the chip itself and the die and the silicon quality, and you weren't getting high amounts of wattage out of those chips. The 2000 series started to see a little bit of an increase with like the 2700X, but it's all aside. So that was the point of the video, is that if you're going with a Ryzen like 3000 chip, like a 36 to 3600, don't. The, these stock coolers, you gotta budget at least 20 bucks for something like this. And I recommend it, it's easy to install, uh, it gets the job done, you'll get some, some a little bit of overclocking out of it, and it's a really, really good use of $20, in my opinion. If you wanna buy this, link in the description below. Yes, I do get a kickback from Amazon when you do. It's very little, but every little bit goes a long way for somebody like me. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you think that four, three to four videos on the same product is not a good idea and you wanna dislike the video, then I understand, hit the dislike button. Leave a comment, let's talk about this. Let's get you subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any new videos that are coming on the pipeline. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech and I'll see you all later on down the road.